everyone. Because NAB in Las Vegas was such a success, we're here today at MPTS, the Media Production and Technology Show in London. We're just hungry for more. Um, that's why we're here to check out what else is out there. Come join us. Hi, Andre. I see um, two very nice cameras here. Can you tell me what's what's new about this one? Okay. Uh, this is our um, GH6. This actually has internal ProRes recording, uh, so ProRes HQ recording um, through the CF Express card as well. Uh, this will do 6K unlimited recording, hence why it's got the little fans as well, so uh, it doesn't overheat. Um, it's also USB-C powered, so you can power it via USB-C whilst it's shooting as well. Um, and it's got uh, a high amount of stabilization in the body. So for those run and gun scenarios, it's fantastic for that. And then what we have also is our box system. So we've got this baby here, which is the, uh, the B-S1H. Uh, and this is basically our S1H in a box. So this is it rigged out, just like that. But if you look at the core of it, it's basically just this. Um, so the benefit of this actually is that you've got BNC connectors at the back. So you've got your uh, SCI out, your time code and your gen lock, and then there's also power over ethernet. So you can connect up to 12 uh, of these together, use our SDK kit, whoever wants to use it, and then you can manipulate that and design that for uh, uh, your company. Um, and then you can switch between all of them, you can control them individually or as a group. Um, and yes, that is what is what we have here at Lumix UK. Okay, and now we're on the other side here. We're at Panasonic Connect. Can you, can you tell us what we're seeing here? Yeah, absolutely. So here we have our robotic systems line up. So we have our tenor point rail system with a UV150 on top. Now this gives you the horizontal and vertical axis movement. And we can control this from the software on our laptop here. We have our RP150 here. Now this is on the AW protocol, everything here. So we can control the horizontal and vertical movement of the dolly and the totem. And also we can control the vertical movement of the Panapod over there. The Panapod is holding three of our cameras at the moment on a T-bar. We have the new UE50, the new UE80 and the UE100 on top. We have the UHS500 here. This is, gonna, this is uh, covering some of the switching that we're doing today. We have the Panapod control and the HRP1000. The UE4 is our lowest end camera, great for universities and installs for wide angle um, installs. And we have our UC4000 studio camera here as well. So this would be typically used for any sort of studio environment needed, so live events or broadcasting. And these PC PDZs can be used for installs on reality television, other live events, and also we could use them in studios as well. So yeah, this is the Panasonic robotic area. Okay, this setup looks amazing. Can you tell me what's happening? We've got a few different things going on here. Obviously, we've got our LED panels. Um, we've got our Brompton processing that drives the panels. We've got Disguise with our media servers. And then we've got Mosis, which is our camera tracking system, which actually sits on the, on the camera. So, what we're trying to do, well not what we're trying to do, what we are doing is we are tracking where the camera is in the virtual environment. Um, so we're using Unreal Engine, um, we put a, a virtual camera in there and we obviously need to know where that camera is in, virtual, in the virtual world. Um, and we need to know where that is obviously in the physical world. So the two together allow us to kind of track where that's going and the dots on the screen are a part of that system. Um, so what the camera is doing, it's looking at those dots as a reference point and then that's giving us our tracking data. It's really a solution to a specific problem. I mean, a lot of the tracking systems, Moses included, work with a system of markers. So typically those markers will be placed on the floor or the ceiling. We're starting to see virtual production volumes now with whole roofs and walls that are completely composed of LED. I mean, you know, an immersive environment. I mean, uh, Star Trek's a good example. It's like the holodeck from, from Star Trek. Um, and if you then kind of go and cover the floor with sand or something, because you're shooting a moon scene, there's really nowhere left to put those markers, except in the content. Uh, so how do you put them in the content without them being visible to the camera? Well, so that's where we came in and we, we've, we've used a system called frame remapping, frame rate multiplication, 
to up the refresh of the screens and basically hide those dots in a frame that the camera can't see between the output that we want to capture. It's the same technology we use for multi-camera workflows if you want to shoot from two different angles. But this is like a, just a very sort of like real world application for that. All right, that looks awesome. All right, okay, and here we're at Red Digital Cinema. They have two cameras set up here. They have the Komodo and the Raptor. And what they actually want to prove with this is that they can bring the cinema quality into broadcasting as well. And they use, you can use a professional RCP for that. You can use a MacBook, you can use an iPad. It's all on one network and it works very smooth. And that's what they're trying to showcase here. This looks like a really nice booth. What's happening here at Atomos? From Atomos, we have a full monitor wall with pretty much every, every option that Atomos have, so people can see them side by side and see the differences. Um, we also have uh, the larger monitors, so Sumo 19, Neon 17, Neon 24, uh, along with their brand new uh, Atomos Connect units. So that's two new products that were announced at NAB, uh, and those units really uh, allow you to stream out to the cloud or stream to Facebook, YouTube, directly from a Ninja, providing that you've got an internet connection. Tell us a bit more about, about what we're seeing about here. Cameras? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro at the end, uh, an FX6 and a Panasonic Lumix GH6. And what we're really wanting to showcase here is the, the Condor Blue rigging, uh, but also, obviously, Atomos units. Every single one has an Atomos monitor on there. It's kind of one of the, the, the big things that we want to show is that, you know, with Atomos, it's camera agnostic. It will pretty much work with whatever camera you've got, whatever setup you've got. All right, MRMC, what do you guys do? So we're basically a robotics manufacturer. We do everything from really big robotic arms through to sports automation systems. Here at MPTS, we're showing off our Polymotion Chat automated tracking software. So it's a real-time tracking system that uses machine vision uh, to process the limbs, detects the limbs, follows the limbs. And here we've got it controlling uh, a Panasonic PDZ camera. It works with all third-party PDZ cameras that use IP control, like NDI or Visco over IP. And then in addition to that, we have um, one of our robotic heads, the AFC, with a Nikon Z9 uh, mirrorless camera on it with external lens motors on an AFC head running on our QRS rail system. So this is an open rail system that can work with other third-party robotics, such as PTZ cameras, and be combined with the automated tracking software of Polymotion Chat. <laughs> That's impressive. Cool. It's, is it following me now? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> nice, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, thank you very much. All right. Hi there, um, what's, what's new on the microphone side of things? Yeah, so what's new is actually that we are uh, branching away a bit from microphones actually. Uh, as most people know, time code is uh, often uh, the task of the sound department. So we came this year with uh, time code boxes. So these are completely um, wirelessly syncable with each other. Uh, so you put one in your sound bag, one on your camera, and you don't have to walk up there. You can just sync it from your sound bag. And uh, you can also control by an app if you want so. But the thing is you don't need it. And there's a screen on it and a menu button and whatnot. So yeah, that's our uh, offering from this year. And we also uh, have a time code Slate coming. <laughs> so we only have a card at the moment because we are, there's literally one prototype in the world. Uh, that will be over the summer that we will come with that. So yeah, what's new this year is that we are moving away a bit from microphones into other uh, segments as well, but all for the location sound mixer. Okay, nice. And what do we see here? The furry... Yeah. The furries are actually not ours. It's from our friends from Bubblebee. Uh, but underneath are our shotgun microphones. So this is the S-Mic 2S. Uh, S at the end stands for short. Uh, that's the longer version. Uh, so yeah, these are completely waterproof, water-sealed uh, microphones to be used uh, for boom operators, uh, indoor, outdoors, obviously. But also a lot being used on uh, uh, broadcast cameras because of the waterproof nature as well, so the elements do not touch the sound quality. Uh, yeah, we also have like lavaliers, uh, 
This is the WLF Pro. Uh, it's in the name, it's a professional grade microphone. Also waterproof. Again, it's not meant to be used underwater, but if water is touching it or if it gets dirty, you can clean it. Or makeup gets in, you can clean it. Uh, so yeah, that's that one. All right, Matt, hi. These microphones, can you tell us what's new? What's the, the newest addition to the line? Yeah, sure thing. So the newest addition is the Video Mic Go 2, which is an upgrade of the Video Mic Go. Uh, the main addition they've included with this one is the digital output. So you've got a USB-C out, which will allow you to plug into a computer, uh, tablet, most devices. Uh, the other addition is the SC14 cable, which is an adaptive cable, which will again allow you to plug into most devices with mini jack input. Uh, just think if there's anything else, you can run DSP with it on the computer as well, so that will allow you to adjust gain levels via a digital medium on a computer or something like that. Uh, yeah, just an all round little great mic to be honest. Good one to add to your arsenal. All right, and what about the headphones there? Is that a is that something you'd like to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> so the NTH100s is obviously Rode's first um, adventure into the headphone market, I suppose is the best way to put it. Uh, they're more tailored towards gamers and streamers, but they do sound fantastic for your music as well. Uh, they are going to be completely modular, so you can change out the cups, you can change out the cable. The cable will plug into both sides as well. Um, yeah, just a really great pair of headphones. Come and have a listen. I heard something about like that it cools your ears. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. It's got um, circulative air cooling technology or something. <laughs> I can't remember the exact phrasing, but it will keep your ears cool. It won't, you know, you won't get all sweaty and kind of horrible. They are also incredibly comfortable. So if you're wearing them for a long period of time, it's, you know, quite easy to do without hurting yourself. And we're done. That's it for the Media Production and Technology Show in London 2022. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you soon.